Welcome back to our 53rd edition of the Torch News Roundup. This week we're taking a look at all the TV news for some of our favorite returning TV shows. Much of the trailers recently released came from San Diego Comic-Con, so without further ado, let's start with Supergirl. The trailer for Season 3 shows Kara dealing with the fallout of Season 2. She says she's not a human and that Kara Danvers was a mistake. So some pretty dark times ahead for the Girl of Steel. Rain is, of course, the main villain this season. Don't really get to see her in the trailer, though. The most interesting addition, though, is Adrian Pasteur joining the cast as Morgan Edge. During the panel, it was also revealed that Martian Manhunter voice actor Carl Lumbly from the Justice League animated series will be playing Martian Manhunter's dad this season. The showrunners said Calista Flockhart's Cat Grant would be making various appearances this season as well. The showrunners admitted there were no solid plans for the Man of Steel to make an appearance this season, but they confirmed Supergirl will indeed have a bigger role in this year's four-way crossover. We move on now to The Flash, and the main villain has been confirmed to be The Thinker. The casting call reads, Male, 40s, 50, open ethnicity. After being struck with dark matter from the particle accelerator explosion, Clifford DeVoe became a metahuman with a mega mind a Stephen Hawking-esque genius who's devised an intricate plan to fix all that he deems wrong with humanity. The Thinker will embark upon a season-long battle with the Flash that pins the fastest man alive against the fastest mind alive. And it also appears that Ralph Dibney, the elongated man, will finally be appearing on the show after getting name-dropped in the first season. The casting call reads, Male, mid to late 30s, open ethnicity. Think Ryan Reynolds or Chris Pratt. Ralph has the ability to stretch his body to superhuman lengths and sizes. However, while resculpting his old body is easy to do, Dibney finds losing the old misguided sense of truth and slobbery, even after joining the team at Star Labs, is a far more difficult task to accomplish. Major reoccurring guest star with a series regular option for next season. So I'm pretty excited about this one. I've been waiting for Elongated Man to make an appearance. It does give one pause as to how much CGI they can spare. I'm guessing he'll use his powers about as often as the Atom, Flash, and Martian Manhunter, which means... not a lot. We also learned there are no plans for another musical episode this year, at this time. The showrunners promised a lighter, funnier season this year, and it's been confirmed that Tom Felton will not be returning this season. Kinda disappointing to me, since I really liked his character last season, but maybe he'll be back in the future. As for the Season 4 trailer, I wasn't quite as enthusiastic. Barry is still off on his merry jaunt in the Speed Force, and Iris has stepped up to lead Team Flash. Because that's just what the show needs. More Iris. It looks like Kid Flash and Vibe are facing down some samurai warrior who wants the Flash. It also looks like Caitlyn rejoins the team very quickly, since she appears regularly in the trailer. No real shots of Barry, but it's likely he'll be back suited up before long. All right, over on to Gotham now. Some tidbits on Season 4 during the Comic-Con panel. Barbara will return, newly trained by Ra's al Ghul. That sounds pretty interesting. It's been confirmed that Butch Gilzean will be Solomon Grundy. Bruce will continue to suit up in a non-Batman proto-costume. And Lee Tompkins will return as a quote-unquote darker character. As for the teaser trailer, Scarecrow will be the season's main villain. We get a few brief glimpses of Penguin and his favorite decoration in the Iceberg Lounge, the return of Victor Zaz, and what appears to be someone in Joker makeup. The Sci-Fi Channel released a Krypton teaser that was exceedingly underwhelming. Not much to even comment on. Not sure why they didn't give their leaked trailer an official release, so not a whole lot to talk about there. And on to Season 6 of Arrow. Not long ago, they released the first photo of our new Black Canary in her costume, and I think it's... decent. They still refuse to use the Canary's trademark fishnet stockings. I guess that would corrupt the youth of America. But they did allow a bit of her arm to show, and I thought that was a pretty classy look. Looks like she's wearing opera gloves. During the Comic-Con panel, some tidbits were revealed, such as a group of villains being the antagonists this season. They also teased Anatolia's back with a vengeance. Richard Dragon, who is sort of DC's answer to Iron Fist, will be making an appearance as well. And actor Michael Emerson has joined the cast in an undisclosed role. It was also confirmed that Vigilante will return, 
and that he indeed has a familiar face. Katie Cassidy's Black Siren joins the cast this season as a regular, but is she friend or foe? As for the trailer, we see some trademark scenes of Green Arrow in action. It's pretty much the opposite of Flash's cliffhanger, where instead of the principal character being missing, most of the secondary cast is missing. Oliver is now dealing with being a single dad, and we see a bit of a showdown between Black Siren and Black Canary. And Slade Wilson returns. On to Legends of Tomorrow. We have a new member of the cast this season, Tala Ash playing Isis. This isn't the first appearance of Isis in live action, of course. Joanna Cameron played her back during the Shazam Isis Hour back in the 70s. During the panel, showrunners hinted at non-human villains this season, teased a vixen villain, and revealed Neil McDonough's Damian Dark and Wentworth Miller's Captain Cold would be appearing again this season. As for the Wave Riders crew, Sauber still appears to be the captain while Rip creates his own version of the Time Masters. The teaser trailer boasts P.T. Barnum, played by Billy Zane, and an Animal Man cameo. And now we get the Defenders' second trailer. We see Danny Rand and Colleen Wing returning to New York amid explosions, and the Defenders kicking butt in that hallway scene from the first trailer. Sigourney Weaver delivers some narration to Elektra, who she seemingly has under her sway. Pretty much all the various series co-stars have cameos here, including Stick, Claire Temple, and Madame Gao. Still not enough costume action as I'd like, but it looks like lots of action and excitement to be had in the series' short run. During the panel it was announced, I'm sure to the chagrin of all the hater SJWs out there, that we are indeed getting an Iron Fist Season 2. They also hinted at an appearance of Misty Knight on the show, prompting a meeting with Colleen Nguyen, perhaps? Hmm... John Barenthal also dropped in to remind us of the upcoming Punisher series. As for the Inhumans panel, Ellen Waglam was revealed to be playing Louise, an original character. If I were to guess, probably comparable to Alicia Masters from the Fantastic Four comics. As for the trailers, I didn't really get a chance to comment on the first one, but I admit to feeling like it had a slightly sci-fi channel-esque feeling about it. For a show boasting its IMAX format, it seems like they're going less exotic locations like Adelan and playing more like a fish-out-of-water concept. One of the things I hated most was seeing Black Bolt in street clothes. But lest I sound like I'm being overly negative, I generally liked the look of the cast, particularly Crystal and Lockjaw, the enormous Merry Mutt. I think Maximus the Mad looks to be a great Shakespearean antagonist in the mold of Loki, Medusa's locks looked fairly convincing, and Black Bolt, while not wearing the mask and headdress, looks appropriately stoic. So I'm really excited for this series. I wish the FF could have been involved, but as it stands, it should be pretty entertaining. Well, that's it for our extensive look at the upcoming TV season. Let me know what you thought of all the trailers and various news from Comic-Con in the comments below. This has been a bittersweet edition since this is probably my final broadcast recorded at Stately Torch Manor. I'm not at all willing to leave behind all the memories I have here. By the time you hear this, I'll probably be moved out, so I don't know when the next broadcast will be, but until next we meet, this is Johnny Torch reminding you once again, keep the flame burning brightly, and I'll be with you again real soon.